This is going to be a quick discussion, if you will, just on rebound and how it's utilized in our playing. Um, just kind of rough off the cuff. I get a ton of questions in my email. I've actually got a folder. I've been collecting them for years. I get multiple questions every day and I answer them by email and some of them are longer answers. If you've ever emailed me, you know I email back. Um, and I was sitting there and I was like, why don't I just <laughs> make videos on some of these? It would be a lot easier for me. So uh, I apologize for massive amounts of kneecap in this video. I usually try to avoid that for everyone's sake. Um, so we're going to talk about rebound. And uh, I had a question come in asking about rebound, how do we utilize that. And so I want to give you just three tips for utilizing rebound. And we're going to kind of go into, I'm going to go into it in a deep way. And this is something that's near and dear to my heart because I've spent the past few years revamping my own technique. There were things that were cropping up that I just, I did not care for in my playing. Uh, kind of recurring themes that I saw and so I broke it just down to the basics and I still spend about 30-45 minutes a day on the pad focusing on these very uh, minute and important issues. So let's approach this on rebound. I'll give you three tips. This is not three exercises because the exercises do not matter if you have bad technique underneath. And you may think you have good technique. I did but you may realize that you're kind of getting in your own way whenever you're playing, okay? And so the number of students that I have that don't understand this first tip is massive. And the first tip is you have to realize how much rebound is actually there when you hit that hit that stick to the drum or whatever surface you're hitting. So many people don't understand how much there is. So whenever I hit that there, if I get out of the way, there's a ton of bounces that happen whenever I just let that stick just do its thing, right? And so let's get into some real nerve. I'm about to take you to school. Okay, let's take Newton's laws of physics, and please, I am paraphrasing these. I'll probably murder them, but let's go with this first law of, of physics, and that's going to be that an object at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted upon by something else, right? An outside force. An object in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted upon by something else, right? So in this case, if I threw this stick it would go on forever and ever if this pad disappeared, my hand disappeared, and gravity was gone, and it was in outer space, all of a sudden it would just continue in the same trajectory forever. Now, Newton's third law of physics is for every uh, uh, action there is an equal and opposite reaction. So, whenever I hit that stick to a surface, that opposite reaction, if we applied all two law, both of those laws, and I disappeared after I hit it, and the surface disappeared, this would go on forever behind me, right? So that's, that's kind of where we're approaching this from. Now, there's, there's another law I want to get into, and don't worry, I'm, not, I'm just letting you understand like the basic principles behind when you hit a stick to a drum or a surface, what's happening. Let's look at the first law of thermodynamics. That's the, we called the, uh, I think, a law of conservation of energy, something like that. Again, I'm paraphrasing. This is a drummer's paraphrase. And that is, no, there can't be any new energy created, created, and we can't destroy it. It just can be transferred or changed, right? So what we're doing is we're transferring and changing this energy. Now, what happens whenever we hit is it, it is transferred and changed into sound waves, into vibrations here, and, and depending on where that goes. But what we have to do is we have to understand how much how much uh, 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 rebound is actually there so we can capitalize on that rebound, which brings me to my second tip. The second tip is we have to allow the rebound to happen, okay? I've seen so many players, and they come in and I say, do you know molar stroke? Yeah, I know molar. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and they're picking the stick up the whole time. That's not at all molar, okay? If we understand the concept behind that stroke, uh, that is getting more bang for your buck is the way I look at it, okay? And we have to really, to be able to master molar, we have to master the free stroke. And once we master the free stroke, which is basically letting that stick do its thing, then we can master the other. Now, let's get back to this. To, to allow the rebound to happen, I have to reassess what I view as grip. Okay, and so I don't like to think of it as grip anymore. I think of it much more like you would um, cradle, I'm trying to keep this from falling, like you would cradle a mouse or cradle a bird or a piece of chocolate you don't want to melt on a hot summer day, right? You're not gonna, you're gonna like cradle it. Much like a cradle, w when you put a baby in it, it doesn't cinch down on the baby, right? It cradles the baby, it just holds it in there. That's what I want my hand to do. And what I wanna do is I don't wanna find a gripping point. I want to find the fulcrum point. Think about a seesaw, okay? I, I was the fat kid when I was a kid, so 
I was the one that could, you know, hold you up in the air, right? I understood fulcrum. <laughs> I understood how that worked, right? And so what we want to do is we want to find a fulcrum point, and the fulcrum point is just a balance point. It's the point of least resistance for that stick, so that when we throw it, we can get more bang for our buck, and we can utilize the free stroke with that fulcrum to use the molar to do things with our hands that we could, uh, that would have otherwise uh, taken more energy from us. So whenever I hit that down, my fulcrum's here. If I get too far back, you'll see that the rebound's not so good. If I get too far forward, you'll see that it's not so good. But you'll see I'm actually not really holding the stick at all. I'm just letting it balance there. That's my fulcrum point. That's the point of least resistance, okay? When we hit this drum, we want to avoid injury. And if we don't hold the stick correctly, we're going to get we're going to injure ourselves because going back to that law of thermodynamics, when we hit there, right? We're transferring energy. Okay, and where does that energy go? It goes into the drum some, right, with some vibrations. It goes out, that's what sound waves are, and it also comes back into the stick. The stick absorbs some, the drum absorbs some, some shoots out in sound waves. And so whenever we hit this, if I grip down on this, it's a different sound than if I open up. What's happening there? When I'm gripping down on it and I hit, it is absorbing some of that energy, those vibrations, but they're also going back into my arm, and that causes a lot of injuries. I know because I've had them. Uh, it causes uh, tendonitis. It causes injuries in the wrist and the fingers. It causes tennis elbow. Uh, all of those things come from constant vibrations coming back into your arm. It would be the equivalent of jumping on a trampoline stiff-legged. Right? It hurts, okay? Because you're not, uh, you're not participating with the rebound. And that brings me to the third tip. You have to participate with the rebound, okay? You have to utilize that rebound. So we have to know it's there, and then we have to let it happen, and then we actually have to participate with it. So what does participating with it look like? Well, that's where we get into the different various strokes that we learn. I have a lot of in-depth lessons on that in the members area of my website. That's not just a, that's not like a, a sales pitch. It's just if you want lessons on that, I have them. This is just about rebound though, okay? And so whenever I take that free stroke, and that is just letting that stick do its thing, right? It's a wrist stroke, letting it do its thing, and I incorporate that with the molar stroke, it's no longer a one, two, three, one, where I'm picking it up. It's a, the stick is doing the work, or four. Right, all I'm doing is that, and allowing that rebound to happen. So whenever I allow that rebound to happen, I, I get more what I call bang for my buck, okay? It's like going somewhere and getting three drinks for one, right? For the price of one. It's more bang for your buck. So what we want to do is we want to realize that there is how much rebound there is. Then the second thing we want to do is we want to allow that rebound to happen. The third thing you want to do is you want to participate and utilize that rebound and, and kind of redirect that energy. That is going to give you the best results because it doesn't matter what, a lot of times people email me like, what do you think about this exercise? What do you think about this exercise? What do you, I think, you know, most exercises are great that I've seen. But if you enter the exercise with bad technique, it doesn't matter. Game over. Because you're only going to get to a certain point. So you have to understand the underlying fundamentals of how we hit the drum, what happens with rebound, understand Newton's laws, understand a little bit about that first law of thermodynamics. We have to understand a couple of those things for us to go, oh wow, so whenever I hit it and I'm not allowing it to rebound, something's wrong there. I need to do something else. I need to make sure that that rebound happens so that I can utilize it, so that I can begin to get uh, uh, German grip finger control, French grip finger control. I can get push pull with the wrist. I can get push pull with the fingers. I can get all of those things going and, and utilize them uh, or, or use them together to get the most uh, for uh, get them get the most from that rebound if you will from the energy that's already present instead of me having to do everything these three twi tips are equivalent to driving a car okay understanding how much energy in the car is great what it can do but then just letting it do its energy thing well that would be disastrous because you go on the road and you would just go wherever right so what do we do we utilize that energy we drive the car we steer the car that's what we need to do here okay that's my three tips Understand how much rebound is actually there, how much energy is there to be redirected. Let the rebound happen and then participate with that rebound, all right? If you uh, want a free lesson series, I've always got my uh, 30 Days to Better Doubles. The link's below this.
You can go download, it's completely free, no strings attached. Uh, thousands of drummers have gone through that and uh, it's helped them out a lot. If you're wanting some exercise to help with your doubles, if you got any questions, put those in the comments or you can always email me, but whatever you do, I'll see you here in the next lesson.